Hello Zoology students. Today we are going to continue with the lecture material on the introductory unit and we are going to wrap up talking about taxonomy and classification. So it'll be a little shorter one today than lesson one. So video lesson two is getting ready to get started. So let's go ahead and jump on in. Okay, so continuing on with taxonomy and uh, or classification. So remember that taxonomy is the science of naming and categorizing all living things. So it's not just animals. Um, this is done with plants and bacteria. Uh, this is done with your single-celled organisms, any living thing on the planet. Um, there are people who are working on classifying and categorizing all of the living things on the planet. And it is believed that um, even though there's well over a million different species that have been classified and categorized, it is believed that that is just a drop in the bucket. So this is our current naming system um, under binomial nomenclature from Carlos Linnaeus. And it's a, uh, a hierarchy. So the, you have your broad categories. And as you work your way down, as you can see, as you work your way down the list here, the categories get a little more specific. So if we go back to um, the grocery store analogy and how things are organized. Okay, think about, so your grocery store Today's grocery stores sell more than just food, okay? So your big broad category in the grocery store would be food. Um, your other categories would be beverage. Uh, you would also have, in a lot of grocery stores, you have your medications. So those would technically not be food, all right? So we're going to look at food, and in food, we're going to go with um, cereals, and so you've got an entire aisle of all these different kinds of cereals. And then you have all of your brand cereals, your high fiber cereals, you have your, um, your flakes, and you have, you know, all of your different, you have your cereals with marshmallows and, you know, your cinnamon flavored cereals, and they're all kind of categorized in that specific order. And so you just work your way down. Okay. Uh, animals are described and classified in the same way. So at the very top, we have the broadest of broad category, and that is called the domain. Uh, there are only three domains of living things on the planet, and it deals with their cellular makeup. So two of them are bacteria. And the domain that uh, life that we're more familiar with is classified in is domain eukarya. And so that is any living thing that is a eukaryote. Now, I'm sure we, were, we remember, all of us remember from biology class, the difference between a prokaryote and a eukaryote. Um, but just on the outside chance that maybe you don't remember the difference. A prokaryote does not contain, the cell does not contain a nucleus or membrane-bound organelles. So no Golgi apparatus, no mitochondria, no endoplasmic reticulum, okay? The eukaryote is just the opposite. Its cells are contained or, or its cells are made up of the internal structures such as the nucleus. So it, it has a nucleus and it has membrane bound organelles. And that's us. You know, we're eukaryotes. Okay. Then we go to kingdom. The next level is kingdom. And so our kingdom that we're studying is going to be kingdom animalia because zoology is studying nothing but animals. All right. So we as human beings are animals. We are classified in kingdom animalia. Um, so are insects and earthworms and uh, your cats, all your mammals, your fish, your birds, reptiles, all 
all of them are animals and all would be in kingdom animalia and so you can see that this creature is also just like us classified in kingdom animalia and then the next level is phylum so the members of a phylum are going to be uh, all in the same kingdom so the phylum for this creature this cat down here is phylum chordata and to be in phylum chordata you have to have um, a dorsal nerve cord so your nerve cord runs down your back and there are a few other categories that we'll get into when we get to that phylum but uh, just know that we have a nerve cord that runs down our back we call it our spinal cord so that's going to put us in phylum chordata so there are there will be a few phyla so kingdom animalia is going to contain uh, a lot of different phylum so an, another phylum that's out there of living things that we're going to study that still would be classified in kingdom animalia is the largest hands down the biggest because of all of the different species that have been classified would be arthropoda the arthropods and that's anything with an exoskeleton so a lobster for example is going to be in kingdom animalia just like this cat but when we get to phylum it's going to split and be in a different a different category because they have an exoskeleton and clearly this cat does not all right so you're going to have similar uh phyla are going to make up one individual kingdom and then we're going to work down towards class we as well as this cat are in class mammalia we're mammals where we are homeothermic we have hair and more importantly we are placental which means our babies develop inside the female's body and are nourished through the female's body and we nurse our young with mammary glands and that's where the name mammal comes from now we go from class down to order we get more specific and in order carnivora is where you're going to have your meat eaters this is where um, we as human beings as primates are going to split and we would go in a different order over here and that would be order primates because we have opposable thumbs carnivores do not so in in order carnivora under kingdom uh, under class mammalia phylum chordata kingdom animalia these carnivores uh, they're going to be made up of your cats all of the dog families the wolves and the bears are all going to be in order carnivora so you're not going to find uh, a shark or a uh, crocodile for example or alligator they're carnivores but they're not mammals so they can't be classified in order carnivora because they have to be a mammal and they're not mammals they're meat eaters but they're not mammals so they're not in in car carnivora okay and we continue on down order we go to family next and this is where the cat is going to split off from all of your dogs and your bears and that's going to be the cat family which is felidae and then we're going to be even more specific in the genus and the genus for this cat is panthera which are all the big cats uh, the difference between big cats and small cats is big cats can roar uh, the big cats on the planet would be your uh, panthers anything panther technically is considered a big cat that's where the term comes from so your tigers the lions african lions and your leopards are all big cats so if we go back a few slides we go into yesterday the previous lesson lesson one one of the scientific names that i listed was a cat called felis concolor and that is the mountain lion or the cougar and it is not in genus panthera and the simple reason is it has nothing to do with its size because it is just the same size as a jaguar or a leopard very very closely the same size as those cats but the leopard and the jaguar have the ability to roar and the mountain lion does not 
they basically meow the way small cats do. So it's considered a small cat, even though it is, it is pound for pound one of the most capable killers in North America um, and is, is a large cat by size, but not by voice. And that's, that's where the difference comes in. And then the species. And the species is Panthera pardus. And it is where the, the panther, the genus Panthera, is going to fork into your different species. And that's where you'll have your leopard and you'll have your tiger and your African lion. And then you'll have the snow leopard. And then you'll have over here the jaguar. And those are your different uh, big cats. Now you'll have, so I, I believe this one we marked as tiger. I'll try to do a little T for tiger. Uh, you'll have subspecies. So there is the Bengal tiger, there is the Indo-Chinese tiger, and there's the Siberian tiger, okay? They're all tigers, but and they're all in the same species, but they're a different subspecies, meaning that they are, uh, they are slightly, just ever so slightly different. But the important thing is if you mated a Siberian tiger with a Bengal tiger or uh, an Indo-Chinese with a Bengal, you would produce fertile offspring. They would be, uh, they are considered in the same species because they can reproduce and make fertile offspring, which means those offspring would be able to reproduce. Okay, this takes me back to my biology class where I would talk about a mule. A mule is a hybrid, is a cross between uh, a donkey and a horse. Okay, uh, they are the only way you can get a mule is to breed a donkey to a horse. Mules are sterile. So that means horses and donkeys, even though they're very closely related and they are very similar, means they are sterile. Um, for you Napoleon Dynamite fans, the liger, I believe, is a cross between the lion and the tiger. And I'm pretty sure that the ligers are sterile. They cannot breed. Uh, they can't produce fertile young. So uh, if you go to East Fork, and you fish at Harsha Lake, you'll see signs there for hybrid white bass. And they are a cross between white bass and stripers and, and striped bass. They are also sterile. They cannot reproduce. So this is why the Division of Wildlife every couple years has to supply uh, that lake with those baby fish because they simply can't reproduce. So if, and they're put in there, to reduce the shad population, which was uh, uh, introduced by people. And their population grew too large and they outcompeted other bait fish. So to reduce their numbers, they put in the, the hybrid bass. And if the numbers ever get, the shad numbers are in control, then you don't have to worry about the white bass taking over because eventually, since they can't reproduce, they'll just die out. And without people repopulating that lake, uh, eventually all of those hybrid bass will disappear. Now, uh, they're still eating shad, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that they still put more in there every year. But um, as it is right now, we don't have to worry about that being evasive species because they're hybrids and they'll simply die out. All right, so as I talked about, domain eukarya, uh, that is any living thing with a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles, so any eukaryote. And again, we go back to our biology class, and we remember that a eukaryote is any cell with a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. The, um, the counterpart to the eukaryote is the prokaryote, and remember, prokaryotes don't have a nucleus or membrane bound organelles. All right, so everything that we are going to talk about is in this kingdom right here, kingdom animalia. To be considered an animal, you only need these following characteristics. Number one, multicellular, means you're made up of more than one cell. Heterotrophic, Okay, do hopefully we all remember from our biology class the difference between an autotroph and a heterotroph. 
Okay, an autotroph is a living thing that can make its own food from sunlight. A heterotroph cannot do that. We don't photosynthesize. We have to eat other things. And we either eat autotrophs or other heterotrophs. Uh, I prefer eating other heterotrophs. The, we are a eukaryote, which would make sense since we are in domain eukarya, meaning, again, I can't say it enough, meaning that we have a nucleus, our cells have a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles, and we do not contain a cell wall. So there, um, if you go back again to biology, hopefully one of the differences you remember from animal cells and plant cells is plant cells have a cell wall, animal cells do not. And since we are animals, our cells do not contain a cell wall. So that's it. Those are the only requirements to be in kingdom animalia. Made up of many cells, we eat things, we have a nucleus, and we don't contain a cell wall. There are about 35 different animal phyla uh, that are out there. Most of them are worms or marine worms. Um, uh, excuse me, 36. That I've, this has been changed. Uh, you can see I've got 35 up here. Let's just change this to a six. I've got 35 up there. So that's, that's old data. So that means they have discovered or classified and they've grouped a new phylum. So now it's 36. There are 36 different animal phyla. So if we were in class together, this is when I would click this link and it would take you to a website that shows you all of the 36 different phyla. But um, we're not going to do that in the essence of time. We're just, just trust me, there are about 36 and they're all in Latin names and they're all really big words and hard to pronounce, but most of them uh, are going to be, again, as I said, most of them are going to be worms and a lot of them are, are aquatic or marine worms. We're not going to look at, we're not going to have enough time to study all 36. We're going to narrow it down a bit. We are going to go to about uh, five or six of those phyla. And if you have your syllabus, you can see what they are. So here's your assignment for today. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to think of three of your favorite animals. And I, um, I want you to try to think of different, uh, uh, very different animals. You know, don't pick three mammals. Um, you know, pick a mammal, a fish, and a bird, or uh, a reptile, an amphibian, and a bird, or a mammal, reptile, fish, something along those lines. I want you guys to, to differentiate it a little bit. I want you to go online and I want you to find, speaking of birds, there's my blue jay singing to me, my bird clock. Uh, I want you to go online and I want you to search for their complete classification. Um, we don't need to list the domain. All I want are the seven levels, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. So <clears throat> if I go back, to right here, this is what you're getting. Give me the kingdom all the way down to species. Now, remember, the species name is a two-word name. So you'll notice that the species name contains the genus level. So Panthera and Panthera. So that means if we go back and look at the mountain lion, it would be identical kingdom animalia, phylum chordata, class mammalia, order carnivora, family felidae. The genus is Felis. It's different because it's a small cat. And then its species name is Felis concolor. If we were to do this for human beings, we'd come all the way down here and we'd get to uh, family primates, genus homo, and then our species is Homo sapien, okay? So you're going to give me kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species for those th your three favorite animals. Uh, you go online and just Google complete classification for, type in the common name. You know, let's say you want monarch butterfly, and you go search that, and you can find it. This should only take you a few minutes. But what I'm going to be looking for, since we're in zoology, all of your answers should start with kingdom animalia all right 
All right, let's go. I'll go back to that slide so that you can, if you want to write it down, you can see your homework. So your three favorite animals and their complete classification from kingdom to species. All right, so that concludes video lesson two. Uh, you have your homework assignment. Um, you can either write that on paper and drop it in the black stack tomorrow, or uh, you can do it electronically and email it to me or go ahead and uh, if you do it on your Google Drive, you can share it with me and I'll get it that way. So either way, um, those are your options. But remember, um, all since this is zoology and everything we're talking about is in the animal kingdom, um, all of your answers should begin with kingdom animalia. All right. So good luck. Turn that in and we'll talk to you later.